So seeing the final ball being used at the NBA dunk contest by KJ Martin was an incredible experience for me. I actually got to be courtside um, when it was rolled out. And I think the reception in the arena, I felt the energy of the people around me, um, players that were standing on the sidelines with me. It would just um, inspire so much passion and so much discussion around basketball. Tackling the idea of an airless ball is something that 3D printing is perfect for. So taking the ball from what I would call a blank canvas to a finished painting is exactly what Dimension did for us. My name is Dr. Nadine Lippa. I work at Wilson Sporting Goods in the Team Sports Division, and I'm an Innovation Manager. Besides just the basic goal of reinventing the basketball, like what about it are we reinventing, right? So um, one of the main consumer complaints for any inflated ball is that eventually all balls go flat. So besides the fact that the airless aspect, so not requiring inflation, the airless prototype is quite different from a conventional basketball. So number one is it has holes in it, which I think most people, when they pick it up in person, that's the very first thing they notice and is part of the excitement of the ball. It bounces to the same rebound height. Um, it feels very similar in terms of you expect the ball to come back to your hand. Um, but again, going back to what's different about the ball, it does have a different surface feel because it's not either rubber or like our composite material. Then within 3D printing or additive manufacturing, um, we had no idea, we had really very little experience with additive. Around that time, we also met up with General Lattice and um, asked for their help to bring some of our more complex design attributes to life in a digital space. So through their help, then we actually had a file and then it was a matter of fine tuning material properties, um, working with EOS and working with Dime Mansion for the smoothing and dyeing. So the process for making a ball goes like this. So first we have a file that's generated from General Lattice with our input and parameters. That file is sent to EOS and it's printed on one of their machines. And then the printed ball is sent to Dime Mansion who smooths and dyes the finished ball. Dime Mansion added a lot of great value to this project because the ball comes out white and the ball also comes out with a finish that is not necessarily favorable to the player. Also, the smoothing process seals the part and just makes it more consistent so that it performs better in our testing. When you look at it, it looks like uh, hollow, and so you think it's gonna be light and sort of airy, and when you go, go to bounce it, it has the full mass and the, the full rebound of the ball, and when it feels like a basketball and you don't get that big thud, uh, it, it kind of plays with your brain. My name is Merrick Moffitt, and I'm CTO and a co-founder of General Lattice. General Lattice is a computational design and digital manufacturing company, and we focus on uh, the development of digital materials and uh, Lattice as a service. So Wilson already had uh, design for the structure itself that they wanted on the ball, and after working with multiple years with a bunch of different clients, um, they were able to come to us and basically define the parameters that were critical within the ball, which we needed to be adjusted to uh, find and get to the final prototype. And so through GL Labs, we were able to define and build a script that allowed us to uh, tweak and pull these parameters that allowed us to change on the fly and iterate very, very quickly to get to uh, a solution that uh, ultimately uh, we were all very happy with. What our software really allowed us to do in this particular use case was to define those parameters that needed to be, we knew that were going to be changing, and allow us to run through those quickly. So almost every application you see has some sort of lattice in it. Our end goal is to see the wide adoption of lattice structures. So can the average everyday application engineer start to look at any object that they may be designing and say, huh, can that be made a different way? Could a lattice benefit this application? And so our goal at General Lattice is to drive the adoption of these structures into more everyday mainstream design and engineering. Watching the public interact with it is, everybody just wants to touch it and dribble it 
and experience it. My name is Dave Krasminski, a Senior Additive Mines Consultant for EOS North America. We were able to identify uh, the high performing material that's used uh, in this project, find the printing solution for that. I think with the printing of the ball, there's sort of a unique influence over all the other uh, features, what the part is itself. So it's unique about the, the basketball part. It needs to be uh, completely spherical, which is very simple in design and elegant, but very challenging from a manufacturing perspective. And then from a performance perspective, it needs to rebound uh, or bounce equivalently in all directions on all surfaces of the ball every single time. So it is, the manufacturing process needs to be flawless. From a printing perspective, we have to understand and get feedback as to the design we're trying to make, where is it falling short, and then make those optimizations to get to uh, the final design which uh, and the final outcome we have now. And then provide that solution to uh, the post-processing team, to our partners there, so that they can appropriately make the, the, the finish and, and the color uh, that the Wilson team wants. Some of the most value in pursuing this type of project is trying it once, seeing how far away you are from the solution, uh, engineering it, seeing it get better and better, uh, and then really getting that solution to, across the finish line and appreciating the technology. The recipe which we figured out, that can be essentially uh, digitally transferred or emailed or uh, the file itself can be reproduced on any system or in the world. And the recipe would likely not need to be tweaked or be tweaked very little. Understandably, if the environment was slightly different, you had a more humid environment versus a very dry environment, you may have to make some slight kind of adjustments. I don't think you're going to completely um, eliminate aspects of consumer goods industry, but I think you maybe will start to see a new area of products or opportunities, and I hope they become more accessible and are not just only accessible to professionals at an exclusive event. But uh, I think that's also on us, right? So in the additive community, in the additive world, it's our job to make these technologies more efficient, uh, more economical, and to kind of tip the scale. So to convince more and more people that it's, it's the right way to pursue. My name is Mike Shore. I'm the general manager of Dimension North America. So when the when the project first came to us and Nadine came to us with Wilson, um, you know we we knew the customer of course, right? We knew it was an athlete, and we knew what the competition was technically because it was a, a, an actual basketball. So one of the most important things for an athlete is is comfort, look and feel. Um, aesthetics, sure, we can play around with that. Um, the design, yes, we can play with it, but if the athlete doesn't feel comfortable with it, it will never make it. So what really needed to happen from the print to the athlete was this step where we came involved to make this application more feel uh, and resemble of an actual product that someone was used to. So we applied our vapor process to it to give us this totally sealed object. So one, it was totally sealed, so it can actually be used both on perspiration concerns from an athlete's hand to different textures of the floor and how it was bouncing and reacting, but also just so it visually was more appealing, had a semi-semi-gloss to it, and most importantly at the very end was actually the feel and grip of it. We didn't want to go too smooth because then it would be too slippery and wouldn't resemble a true basketball, so we had to go very, very fine-tuned adjustments to get to the just the right uh, process parameters. So thankfully with the, the use of the PowerFuse S, uh, we're introducing a solvent onto the part through an iterative process and removing it, and the back end of this phase, we're actually using a vacuum process to draw as much as that residual solvent through the part off of it as possible. Um, what that means is we're leaving that part sealed completely. We wanted to make it stand out, which is why the idea was to go black with the ball, because it really made it pop. Um, so we were able to use our DM60, toss the ball right in there, and the ease of the process was that we were able to just use our standard scanning of the cartridges to, to create the color that was exactly desired by the customer and Wilson, of course. This dye is chemically bonded to the polymer links themselves which means our process is impacting into the part itself and therefore not having anything on the surface that's residual. At the very end result, um, through the dimension systems, the ball still met exactly what characteristics that we're looking for from Wilson. So if we were to scale up this ball into the thousands and larger units, of course, 
The system that we were using to do this is a fully automated system. So that means we can actually run lights out when we go into larger production volumes. And for us, that's a very big thing to do because not only can we create this guarantee of repeatability, but we can also create this idea of we can meet scale and volume as required. One of the most exciting things for me about a project like this is the hype that it brings to this industry. Um, it gets all of these great initiatives and ideas and the blood flowing to say, what's next?